In this week's uh, update from IHME on modeling the COVID pandemic, uh, I think there's uh, a number of important uh, aspects to our analysis. First off, we're seeing uh, a number of places that are uh, peaking from their Delta surges, uh, states in the US, a number of them in the South, a number of states in Mexico have now peaked. Um, a number of countries in Southeast Asia have peaked and started to come down, but we're seeing continued increased transmission in other states, in Mexico, the U.S., uh, much of Canada, the sort of uh, a central band in Europe from Sweden and Norway right down through to Greece, and then a band of countries below the Sahel in Sub-Saharan Africa. And then, of course, Australasia is having uh, large delta surges. So delta surges continuing. Uh, the experience in Scotland, which is now entering its second delta peak, or delta wave, I should say, not peak, uh, is very important. Uh, if you remember, Scotland uh, started their delta surge in July. They reached a peak, very abrupt decline. And in the last two to three weeks, there's been a, a second Delta surge. And Scotland opens its schools earlier. And uh, the, the current view from given the percent of cases that are under the age of 18 is that this second Delta surge is due to transmission in schools and school children. Similarly, large numbers of school children now being reported infected in Israel lends credence to the idea that because Delta is so much more transmissible, as schools open, this may be a real driver for accelerated transmission. So in the past, when we've seen peaks of transmission, there's tended to be many weeks or months of decline after the peak, you know, the Delta surge in India, for example, in April and May. But now with Delta being so much more transmissible combined with school openings, we may see much more complex patterns. In terms of our forecasts, uh, what we're seeing is expected, uh, you know, large transmission at the global level through till December 1st, uh, maintaining for throughout that whole period transmission over 5 million infections a day. And we should expect to see in our reference scenario, global deaths continuing um, to be above or, or in the range between 8,000 to 10,000 a day. So no, in, even though vaccination is scaling up, including in many middle income countries now, uh, and there's a cumulative uh, natural immunity from increasing Delta infections, we are at the global level not expecting to see um, COVID go away in any sense. And as we look forward to 2022, there's several things that suggest that we will see very considerable COVID transmission in 2022 as well. We will only have about 35% of the world's population uh, fully vaccinated by towards the end of the year. And natural uh, the, com the combination of natural infection and immunity derived from that, or partial immunity, and vaccine-derived immunity and its partial effect on um, protection against Delta infection, all combined, we expect that more than half of the world will still be susceptible to Delta by the, towards the end of the year, meaning there's huge room, even without a new variant emerging, for continued transmission uh, around the world. I think the other uh, critical issue that we're seeing around the world, uh, both playing out currently in the policy debate and in our models, is whether high-income countries and some middle-income countries that are uh, having higher vaccination rates are starting to debate whether the goal of control is stopping infection or harm reduction, that is reducing severe uh, hospitalizations and death through vaccination and seasonal mask use in those that are at, at risk. And that debate we expect will intensify 
as waning immunity it becomes clearer and clearer that it's it's going to be quite challenging in all countries to control infection fully. So those are the sort of main themes that emerge from this week's analysis. Uh, as we enter September and many countries have school openings, uh, it, it, it may shift our forecasts from our reference case, possibly more towards our worst case, which has you know, much larger numbers unfolding in the next two months, uh, particularly.